Dr. Max Sinatter, our guest, he is a brain expert, he's a neuroscientist, he is head of the Brain Research Lab at the University of British Columbia. We're talking today about concussions, the causes, uh, the healing. Do some brains heal better than others from concussion? And if so, why? Well, uh, yes, um, uh, they do. Um, what I tell people is, if you're going to have a brain injury, be sure to schedule it early in your life. Really? Because, oh, yeah, there's no because question. Well, you know, in the end, uh, recovering from an injury basically uh, involves mm -hmm. rewiring the brain to, you know, bypass the damage. And you're much better at doing that uh, when you're young. So I definitely advise you to have your brain injuries yeah. early. There's more and more evidence that if you, uh, you know, if you, you can have the same, you know, the same sized hole in your head uh, as uh, you know a 60 year old and as a five year old and the five year old will recover and mm -hmm. you know may not may not even show any symptoms so um, that's one of the things but you know one of the criteria but the other thing is some people just seem to be better and it seems in general that it is the people who were really functional high functioning before they seem to have um, you know, a lot of learning involves the creation of uh, what I call superhighways in the brain, strong mm -hmm. pathways with a lot of redundancy, with a lot of speed. And you can, so, you know, you learn to solve a problem lots of different ways. And so, you know, when a part of your brain becomes injured and some wires get cut or some cells die for one reason or another because of the trauma, uh, you've got other ways, and some people just have more brain plasticity than others do. Right. That's determined by what? What you eat, how you function, exercise, um, meditation, okay. I think plasticity. Plasticity is really, you know, the ability of your brain to change depending on how it's used, mm -hmm. what it needs to do next. And it's determined by... Um, how good use you've put your brain to so far, okay. uh, by how well you've chosen your parents, uh, mm -hmm. by how young you are. And there are lots of ways that we're working on in our Brain Research Center to enhance brain plasticity. We have, we have pills that we're working on. Really? Oh, I, think, I like that. I like that too. It'd be mm -hmm. convenient, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. um, so certainly, uh, uh, you know, we're working on basically ways to enhance communication between brain cells, which is really the essence of mm -hmm. brain plasticity. And uh, we have several groups that have figured out how to strengthen pathways in the human brain. Either they use pharmacologic approaches, and those are coming down the pipe. They're not quite ready for prime right. time, but they're going to be used in everything. They're going to be used uh, in promoting recovery from brain injury. They're going to be used in promoting recovery from stroke. They're going to be used in helping, you know, you and me, if we ever get old, uh, you know, to have better memories. They're mm -hmm. going to be used for people with Alzheimer's disease. And it's, it's the holy grail. They're going to be used to make everybody smarter. I like that. Uh, I like uh, that. Dr. Oz says if you arm um, and you meditate that the brain is less likely to age, it stays younger, he suggests. Well, you know, true, he, not true. There's actually quite a lot of evidence now that meditation is good for you, mm. and it's good for you for a variety of different reasons. One of the, uh, you know, one of the reasons we don't remember things is because, you know, we don't live in the present enough. Mm -hmm. You know, we live in the future. Like I get introduced, I walk in here, and I meet various people. Uh, you know, and I'm already thinking, oh, what questions is Fanny going to ask me later on? So I don't even pay attention to what's <laughs> right. going on. You know, but I've uh, never stumped you. That's the thing. Oh, you stumped me you all You always the time. know the answers. But, but, you know, what meditation teaches you is to have a more focused brain. Mm. A lot of us have what I call a dithering brain. You know, we're thinking about 23 sure. things at once. We're multitasking all the time. Our society promotes that. And meditation forces you and gets you practice at thinking about one thing. And thinking about one thing is a very powerful way to improve your attentional capabilities and to improve your memory. And mm. that is the basis of a lot of cognition. Mm. So what do you think the so impact... So I'm a fan. Oh, you're a fan, but what would be the impact be of social media? Uh, every, uh, people tweeting and yeah. uh, texting and driving. <laughs> Not supposed yeah. to, but... You know what I mean, it's, like multitasking yeah, in a way you know, we never have before. Yeah. You know, it's really not clear that the world in which, well, the world we live in is uh, causing our brains to 
change into new ways of doing business. It's mm -hmm. much more multitasking. It's much more short-term focus, short-term attention span. It's much more stressogenic. We live in a much more fast-paced and stressful world. That's, in general, not good for our brains. Right. Well, they were suggesting taking uh, penmanship out of some classrooms. I think it was in the United States. But writing in the brain, people are not writing longhand anymore. Interesting, the, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it is. Yeah. And I don't know if that... Uh, well, it seemed to me there is a direct link. Now, you're the scientist between our hand and our brain. Oh, for sure. For sure. Well, that's, that's, a, you know, that's a great skill. But remember, people weren't writing longhand until a few hundred years ago. Well, true. And, and we did get smarter, so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, plus a change. <laughs> <laughs> but, so back to concuss, concussions, uh, long-term effects. If you've been concussed once, several times, now you're 80 or you're 70. Uh, more likely to get dementia or absolutely Alzheimer's? Absolutely, or? Alzheimer's. More likely to get Parkinson's. It's actually a very scary prognosis. You know, these, you know, athletes, uh, these people we've sent to places like Iraq and Afghanistan, mm -hmm. they come back with, uh, you know, brain injuries. Um, and particularly if you have more than one, you know, things are not the same in there. Uh, one of our uh, scientists found that if you've got a piece of your brain that isn't getting enough blood supply, let's say because you tore a few blood vessels in a, quote, mild concussion, that that doubles and triples the rate at which you form beta amyloid. And that's the toxic protein in Alzheimer's disease. So Sidney Crosby already has an increased risk for Alzheimer's mm. disease. And, you know, there's a whole evolving story here of these people, uh, you know, who, you know, have problems when they're young and then they may, you know, come back. And then when they hit 50, 60, 70, right. uh, they develop dementia. So, so what happens with somebody like Gabrielle Gifford, the U.S. Congresswoman who was shot in the head? Uh, put into a medically induced coma, coma. recovering. What's yeah. going on in her brain? What's going on in her brain is, well, you know, think of the city of Vancouver. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's a bullet. It comes through the back, comes out the front. So imagine this, you know, machine that goes through the city of Vancouver and takes out Georgia Street. Right. That's really the way I think of it. Mm. You know, so all the traffic that ever went down Georgia Street is gone. All the cross streets going across Georgia Street are going to have to find new ways to get there. You're going to have to reorganize all kinds of functions. And that's a very hard job. Some can never be reorganized. Uh, she is getting the best rehab money can buy. Mm -hmm. And so she is getting the best cognitive, motoric, sensory exercises we can devise uh, to create new pathways in the brain to work around that damage. Because those cells are dead. I mean, they're, they, they just ain't there no more. Um, and I think, you know, she's a, she was, a, uh, by all accounts, an extremely smart and articulate mm -hmm. woman. She's probably got a lot of redundancy. And but, resilient. She and resiliency. resilient. She's she was motivated. Tough. She's motivated. tough. All those are good things. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, unless we can, you know, put some stem cells in there sometime mm -hmm. and uh, replenish those cells, uh, unless we can enhance the plasticity pharmacologically, she's certain to have long-term okay, deficits. Okay, well, you're working on that at the Brain Research Center, getting and a new are, building, getting a new facility? We are. We are actually, it is a very exciting time mm. for brain research uh, in uh, Vancouver, and I, I dare say in Canada. So... Uh, we've now begun construction on the new Javad Moafagian Center for Brain Health, uh, which is located on the UBC uh, uh, campus, uh, directly adjacent to and connected to the UBC hospital. It's a joint project of UBC and Vancouver Coastal Health. And I think it's really going to change the way we mm -hmm. do business for uh, studies and work in the brain. It's going to be a partnership between the patients, the family, uh, the families, the clinical researchers, the doctors who are actually seeing the patients. Mm -hmm. The dream is that every patient will be a research subject. So you come in there, you'll, you might have Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, depression, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia. They all come to the one headquarters. They get treated by the best docs in British Columbia. And then imagine their DNA, their brain scans, uh, their mm. case histories float upstairs to the people in the white coats who are making the revolutionary discoveries. 
And then the benefits of all that research flows down to benefit not only the patients in that facility, but patients mm -hmm. all across the world. It's really exciting. It's the Mayo yeah. Clinic of the North. It is. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, I'll take that. Thank nice you. Nice to see you again. Very nice Always to a see pleasure. you again, Fanny. Pleasure. Dr. Max Sinatter, Brain Research Lab, UBC. And coming up.